ipmnation.com. From the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by ipmnation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Welcome back. The top of the hour. <laughs> oh, did I know? Is that the signal for your going to the pool? Can you take all the neighbors that are busy stealing my internet signal with you when they go? Just get them all out of here. Everybody out of here. I, I don't know. I've cut off everything that I could possibly imagine, and we're still having trouble getting the intersection. So take just take all the, of New Albany with you uh, to the swimming pool. That would be great. Thank you very much. Appreciate you doing that for me. All right. Welcome back to, <laughs> what is it now? 300, 301, the 302nd episode of all natural being we only have 21 hours and 58 minutes left my apologies if so here's the thing right we we've cut out every possible drain on you know the high speed business class dual band satellite connected <laughs> internet connection and all i'm thinking is sunday afternoon everyone's busy uh, maybe i don't know is it football season? i don't even know what, what i don't even know what is it football season yet? Whatever it is. Well, everyone's busy competing for the Internet. So my apologies uh, for that. But thank you for joining us. We are now into the beginning of the third hour of our 24-hour mauer, mauer, 24-hour marathon here at All Natural Being. Thank you so very much for joining us. Let me say hello to Henry here in the feed. Wayne, he's back. Thank you very much. John, thank you very much. Dana, thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. And I would, I would imagine, you know, that I, I'm just hoping that it's Sunday afternoon. A lot of people, right, they're getting ready to head out and, and the like. So remember that you can listen at All Natural Being or you can listen at ipmnation.com slash ANB now. So if you're out and about running around and you're wondering how's the marathon going, is it going to be able to pull it off? Will he really go the full 24 hours? This would be a great way to take us to the pool, take us to the grocery store, take us wherever you're, maybe to a barbecue. And I know we have a very special guest calling in here uh, in just a little bit. I think he's, uh, uh, I think he's busy working at a barbecue as well. Makes me hungry every time I think about it. Um, but uh, so if you're going to be out and about and on the go, take us, take me with you. Um, I'd love to go and keep you up to speed on everything going on here at All Natural Being. Thank you so very much. I think we're perfecting it. I think, you know, it's only taken us a couple <laughs> of tries, but we're in the middle of our 24-hour marathon, which is the ramp up to 81 to win. 81 to win later this December, where we go for the world record for the longest call-in radio show. So thank you so very much for joining me and for everyone that's uh, uh, busy out and about running around the day. Thank you for taking us with you at ipmnation.com slash ANB now. And then, so just a little bit of housekeeping, don't forget, uh, for the people that have called in, head on over to truefruit.com, pick out your favorite flavor, then leave it to me. I'll go ahead and get you a bag of your favorite. Like I said, there's uh, real raspberries and bananas and all the rest of it, but it's, uh, a, 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 as I call it, a little bit of truth in advertising, right? It's, it's freeze-dried fruit, and then it's dipped in just delicious dark chocolate, and it's great for you. Now, they talk now about polyphenols and how even my doctor said one of, the, one of the things that you can do to help in terms of getting enough antioxidants into your body, you ready for this? Dark chocolate. So I'm all over that, and especially when you get a chance to learn um, you know, about the freeze-dried fresh fruit, not f just, just real fruit. 
right? If I want juice, I'll have a waiter bring it to me, right? I also want to thank Gordon earlier in the hour from tryh2.com, one of the sponsors here, helping with all the different things that he and I were talking about, help to keep me going and uh, full of energy and alive and digging the gig here for the 24 hours. So Gordon, uh, uh, let me thank Gordon and don't forget to head on over to tryh2.com. Also, we're waiting this hour. We're going to get to hang out with Henry Noel from Transitional Radio. He'll be calling in here in just a little bit, so we'll be able to talk to him. And he's on the road. He's like a roving reporter today for Transitional Radio because he's not where he normally is. So we're looking forward to talking to him in just a little bit. I talk a lot about, you know, you got to filter your water. you got to filter your air. you got to watch the food you eat. You've got to filter your philosophy. And Henry Noel is my philosophical filter. He's the, the uh, you know, one of my gurus to go to when it comes to those things that I want to just, you know, filter some of the toxins out in my own thought. And we'll be talking to him about that here in just a little bit. Also, I want to thank Sales Copy Academy because they are the official time sponsor, as you can see now, just 21 hours and 50. <laughs> just <laughs> what is wrong with me? Don't answer in the thread. Don't answer. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can come up with it on my own. Uh, 21 hours and 53 minutes left here in our marathon. <laughs> so yeah, I got that going for me. Uh, and then I also want to thank Pollen Tech. We've been talking, we were talking with Gordon about Pollen Tech uh, and for filtering the air. The entire studio is the air is filtered. Uh, with uh, the technology from Polytech. And Paul will be on a little bit later. I think he's on this evening, be talking about a braided tire dust and, about, again, about this report that says, um, you know, air quality is just horrible around the world. Forget after the forest fires out west, but just in general and what you can do to filter your air, Right. And, and we're not talking $100,000 systems. We're not talking about that. These are, Paul's the guy, the brilliant guy that put this all together, and we'll be interviewing him a little bit later about how you can purify your air. So thank you to them. Brando, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us and watching All Natural Being. Nice to see your icon pop up. All right, let's go to the call. Good afternoon. Welcome to All Natural Being. Who's this? Hello, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, Henry. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm calling from the beautiful big city of Mobile, Texas. Population 101. 101. So, so there's some times where its population is the same as the temperature outside. Pretty much. It has <laughs> been that way since I got here, yes. <laughs> all right. So I want to get to cheeseburgers and jalapeno poppers, right? Because that's all I've been able to think about since I got your text yesterday. But, but just as important, we've been talking about water filtering. We've been talking about air filtering. We've been talking about watching the food that we eat. And one of the things that I've said about you is that you're my philosophical filter, right? So I can filter out some of the thoughts that ricochet, some of the binge thinking that I can be subject to. So I hate to, to put you in the category of a water filter, an air filter, non-GMO uh, <laughs> foods, but you're my philosophical filter. <laughs> Um, and that's why I'm so excited that you called in today and to thank you, as I said in opening this off, Henry Noel runs Transitional Radio. And if you haven't listened to it yet or you haven't seen him over on YouTube, you most certainly can find him at ipmnation.com slash Transitional Radio. I think it's IPM4. But he was also instrumental, the good folks at Transitional Radio, instrumental in helping me build out the studio which is why, Henry, when we were getting some reports earlier about the Internet cutting in and out, I go, I have a, my phone, my I, every possible attack on my Internet, right? Because you pay Spectrum $487,000 a week uh, to get a uh, business class Internet in here. And then I'm thinking maybe it's a holiday weekend and all these people are busy sucking down my Internet. So <laughs> we're trying <laughs> everything we can. <laughs> But I want to thank Henry Noel and uh, everyone at Transitional Radio because we could not have, we would not be doing this if it weren't for you and your team. So, Henry, thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so very much. So now let's get to it. You're my philosophical filter. Thankfully, I don't have to plug you under the wall or I don't have to hold you under, let's say I don't have to waterboard you, right? I don't have to hold you under the spigot uh, to filter my no, water. No, I quit real bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and I would rather uh, milk board or maybe sangria board. Um, 
now. That's how we would. Well, well, you know, just to take one for the team. So talk to me about why I'm so fired up about you being a philosophical filter. What the hell is going on in the world today where outrage is the new black? Everyone is just, you know, running around, uh, hot heads wrapped in thin skin. What is going on? Well, you know, follow, following up from Gordon, you know, I think it's important that we, we just simply understand that, that yes, you know, we do have our stresses in our lives. Okay, there's, there's a, there's, that's the gimme. I mean, we have our physical stresses, the jobs, the kids, the family, the aches and pains. And, of course, we also have the foods that we eat mm-hmm. that, that can't be digested and petroleum poisons that are in the food due to the packaging that they come in. Mm-hmm. But the largest stresses that we create are the ego-driven uh, okay. stresses, the psychological uh, stresses that we, we create for ourselves. And when you really look at it and weigh them out, um, things such as guilt, okay, mm-hmm. past decisions we've made, um, some of the, the, uh, the past comments we've made that now we regret or the, the, the disciplining we've had to do as parents and now we regret those, uh, the discrimination we've practiced. I mean, pretty much everything that we have or have not done create guilt in us. Uh, we have the fears that we live with, the, f- the fear of the future or fear of failure. Or the, I love the best one, is the fear of success. Sure. Uh, fear of dying, fear of criticism, fear of others. I mean, all of these things that, we, the unknown, we fear the unknown. I mean, we fear everything. Uh, then we have those needs, those ego-driven needs. Well, of course, health and security, protection of our possessions, ourselves, our families. We have um, the desires, the bigger homes, the cars, the riches, mm-hmm. the fame, all the travel. We have the ego wants for world peace. I love that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> our, our, our need to be accepted, our want to be accepted, approved, our happiness, our completeness, the contentment. Mm-hmm. And the list just goes and goes and goes. So when it comes to illnesses and stress-induced illnesses, our immune system lives under a constant bombardment of stresses, <laughs> well, both physical and the, our mental ones. And... To add to that, the low quality of food, the unhealthy beverages, mm-hmm. the pollutants, our immune system doesn't have a chance to recover. Uh, it can't repair itself. So if we simply stopped all of these internal stresses, mm-hmm. we can stop creating the internal environment that actually creates all of these illnesses. Mm-hmm. And we stop becoming or being long lifetime customers of pharmaceutical companies. And that's exactly the thing pharmaceutical companies fear, that we're going to actually get healthy. We're going to get smart. Mm-hmm. And we just might need not need them anymore. So, you know, you look at all of that. That's just for us. Mm-hmm. And then what that does to us is it creates the environment out there that the world is in at this point. We fear. We mm-hmm. hate. We discriminate. We can't seem to talk to our neighbors. We can't seem to do anything. And, and that's, that's, that's the condition that we're in. We don't trust, we can't trust our politicians, we can't trust our, the religious institutions, because we are not getting the guidance that really helps us understand who we are and who we really were from the very beginning. Hmm. And then I think Sorry, there's a cumulative... No, there's no, 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 no. And there's a cumulative <laughs> effect to that, Henry. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I've talked to you before about why are we busy being a psychological Sherpa For other people's opinions. Yes. Right? Because there's a stress involved in that as well, I would think. But we're so worried about getting a thumbs up or a like or a tweet or this or that or anything else that you just got to go, what is going on? Where is it that we learned? Now, in fairness, right, when we're little, we have to have outside sustenance. Of course. Right? I'm just saying we're all groping for the nipple. Right? You need milk. You need food. You need a little bit of tutelage, right? Or we'd all be running with scissors in traffic uh, to get across the street and stick that scissor in an electrical outlet, right? We need a little bit of counseling. But at some point, there's a shelf life to that part of the ego, right? There's a born on date. And then there's a time where you have to abandon that. Right. I say all the time or or you'd see me at the swimming pool at my age in water wings and a little rubber ducky or you'd see me riding down the street on a bicycle with training wheels. Sooner or later, 
we have to jettison. So can, would you tell us a little bit about your past life, what you used to do? And when I use the word jettison, why did it make me think of that past life right away? Can you, do, you, <laughs> do you mind if I out you a little bit? Can you tell us, uh, give us a little bit of your history? No, not at all. Um, I I was a uh, uh, engineering. I was an aerospace engineer. Actually, I uh, I worked uh, on the uh, Delta rocket program for McDonnell Douglas at the time. Uh, the Challenger had just exploded, and I was hired in and and part of the uh, operations program management team. We we had to put the GPS satellites in space for the Air Force, and uh, that's. That was my main my main career was was dealing with engineering, uh, especially aerospace. Okay, and um, it was a uh, it was a challenge. Of course, it was a challenge. But uh, but the Challenger had just exploded, and um, and you know the the country was in mourning. We were <laughs> devastated by that the loss of of life, and um, and so they the Air Force turned to McDonnell Douglas to put these GPS satellites in orbit, and so we did that. Um, but not without trial and tribulation, let's put mm-hmm. it that way. But uh, that was my pretty much my career. And I, I love to refer to the way we built the rocket. Uh, there was a main stage, and of course around it are solid rocket boosters. And I always look at that as being myself and my ego. And <laughs> that was the way I had to try. That's how I finally understood what devastation my ego was doing to me. I mean, it was a very ego-driven job. I mean, you, to control the power that you had, the authority you had was just absolutely endless. It was amazing. But <laughs> I saw that stage, first stage of the rocket, and it couldn't get into orbit without the solid rocket boosters. So in essence, it couldn't achieve its goal, which was to get the satellite into space without having these ego-driven motors around it. <laughs> But like the way we processed this, once it was launched and once it hit a certain al- altitude, three of those solid rockets would jettison away from the fuselage. As it got a little higher, the, the other ones would jettison, and then the rocket could actually achieve its orbit with just the first stage main rocket, main engine. Henry, we've and, never talked about this before. I, I, I'm actually sitting up straight to pay attention. Not that I always don't pay attention <laughs> to what you're saying, but you're absolutely right. So at a certain stage, without the ego, you'd never get off the launch pad. At a certain stage, without the solid rocket booster fuels, I don't know anything about it, but I mean, I imagine you're getting into the atmosphere or whatever, the stratosphere, whatever it's called. But then without those, we wouldn't be here. We never would have made it out of infancy. But then there comes a time where you're not going to make it to the stars. You're not going to make it where you belong if you're holding on to those empty solid rocket booster fuels. Exactly. It's dead weight. Okay. And weight is a a critical, it's a critical substance for ourselves, too. We hold on to dead weight. It's our baggage, the stuff we drag around with us all Mm -hmm. over our lives. And until we jettison all of that dead weight, Mm -hmm. uh, we can't achieve a a solid, really good, nutritious, a a well-balanced adulthood if we don't jettison this dead weight. And we just, we love to carry it around because we ultimately identify with it. We have claimed it as ours. We have named it as ours. And so we own it and we can't seem to give it up because we think it's so important to us when actually it's holding us back. That is absolutely fascinating to me. That's a great, a, a great metaphor. Uh, I just, I, I never really looked at it that way. So you have this epiphany, you see that, you understand what it is. What's the next step for Henry Noel? What, when did you decide and maybe not when did you decide, but what you did you decide in that moment when you had this awakening? What what, what were you going to do next? Um, I was going to start to push myself into uh, changing companies, cultures, the cultures of companies, and which is what I ended up doing, going in and doing, doing just that. Um, I realized that the way the manufacturing world worked, it was extremely ego-driven, And it was always a pressure cooker. You never were on time. Everything was always delayed. And, of course, it's the the main company that puts everything together. They're the ones responsible for getting it out to the customer on time. And so I would go in and started building uh, training employees on how to deal with empowerment, trying to convince management, which was uh, that was the biggest challenge in the world because there's so much ego in management, Mm -hmm. uh, that – that 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 is where the issue lied. You know, you 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 have a, a mission. Every company puts out a mission statement. They have a a a a, a focus. St- 
statement of how they operate and what they believe in. Wrong. Hmm. I have never read one where a company actually followed their own mission statement, their own guidelines, hmm. their own focus, their own vision statements. It was always a crock. You know, we put the customer first. No, they uh-huh. don't. And because they didn't know how, and they placed themselves first. And it was very interesting to go through and spend six months, nine months in the company, and then get called up to before the board of directors to say, okay, so what have you found out? And you have to tell them, well, here's the situation. You want this to happen. Mm-hmm. And in order to happen, this person, that person, and those per- people, all vice presidents need to be fired because they're the ones <laughs> holding you back. Sure. It's a, that's a scary position to stand there looking at the chairman of the board going, you want me to what? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, but that is the situation. You wanted to know what's holding your company back from living the dream you, you guys set up. Well, here it is. This is what's causing you the problem. And so I went in to do that, change cultures. And so you go from company to company to company and doing exactly that. And it, I mean, to me, that was the, the closest I got to a rewarding uh, career. Okay. Because those that did listen made changes and became very successful companies. Those that sure. didn't went out of business in five years; they were gone, and those companies no longer exist. So it was, um, it was sort of a, a, a realization. I was on the right path that we okay. have to treat people like people. We have to give them respect. And we have to listen to what they have to do. It's not stroking their egos; mm-hmm. it's stroking their abilities and, hmm. and allowing them to free think. Allow them to have the authority to make a decision that might shut down an assembly line for a million dollars an hour. Sure. But knowing they're not putting out bad product was the more important than, and a lot less expensive than trying to recall all, like, for example, all the vehicles that get recalled all, every year. Um, if you just give them the authority to shut it down when they're putting a bad part on or with the person who's making the part, you see it's bad, then don't pass it to the next person. All right. So, Henry, it let me ask it, you this. How about for people listening then? Right? Your life is an assembly line. You've been doing A or B or C, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's become rote. It's become uh, pedantic. It's become repetitive. But then you go, okay, well, if I shut down the line, it's going to cost me a million dollars. There's a lot of people listening to go, well, I just can't derail my life. I have all this baggage that I've invested in. So, mm-hmm. But what you're saying is what you've learned in business is that sometimes you take a little bit of a hit in order to put your heart's highest priority top of the list. Yes, it might be a little bit expensive to pull your heart out of the junk drawer, to pull your heart out of the dustbin, but couldn't we, as listeners, couldn't we look at what you just said and go, it's no different than when Henry went in and shut down a, a manufacturing line at a million dollars an hour. Sometimes those things have to be done in terms of, a future that is the greater good for the individual. Well, I, absolutely. I think the most important part of the life's lessons that we really need to learn is in order to life you dream about, mm-hmm. you have to change yourself, which means you have to stop identifying with all of the things we've carried through our whole lives. Okay. Is it painful? Of course it is. Sure. It's very painful. Um, and realize we don't need all of that anymore that that's not who we really are, mm-hmm. and restart our life over again. You, you're never too young to learn. Mm-hmm. And, and the most important thing we can learn is to really learn about us, learn about what's important to us. If, if enjoying a, 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 a healthy, uh, stressless life is important to us, then maybe we don't need to push ourselves to that 8,000 sure. square foot home or that Lamborghini that, every, that we've been always wanted. Realize that those aren't what makes us us. What sure. makes us us is what we see in the mirror. That's what makes us us. Henry John says over in the thread, he says one word, uh, integrity, exclamation yeah, point. One. So that's your all-natural being that we talk about all the time. You're wild at the core. Your heart's highest yeah. priority, putting it top on your list. That's my definition of integrity. How about you? Absolutely right. That is what it is. I mean, everything else, we are lying to ourselves, and that is mm-hmm. the biggest issue we deal with. We're living a lie. It's not our life. It was somebody else created this life for us, mm-hmm. and we're living it. And so once we can actually take control, look in the mirror at what we're doing, mm-hmm. and say, I don't want this anymore. Sure. I need to stop. 
It's not yeah, always easy, is it, Henry? It's not always easy. I mean, it's scary to go, yeah. I don't want me. Maybe, right? The better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Or I've yeah. talked before about Stockholm Syndrome, right? Where everyone's like, they end up falling in love with their captor. And yeah. you go, how is that possible? How is it possible you could fall in love with your captor? Maybe we've done that with the parts of ourselves, both inside and outside, the parts of ourselves that continually chop block at every turn. Yes, that's exactly what we've done. We've allowed, we've allowed our egos to chop block us, to become the, it is the, it is the, the devil we don't see. Sure. And until we can really accept the fact that that is actually there, that that is what's really holding us back, that's our challenge, sure. is to gain control over that, then we can look in the mirror and say, wow, now it's me. Now I, that's what I want to deal with is me, not my ego, not, not all the things that, that, that everybody wants. It's, it's living with yourself. And I'll tell you what, facing your true self is a very frightening thing to do because you're sure. stripping away all of these things that we've used to protect ourselves with, and you're there by yourself. Sure. You know, you're the, you're the king in the, in, in, in the invisible clothes. You have nothing else to hide anymore. And as Dana says in the thread, it all starts with the choice. That's it. John says it's the fungus among us. Henry, we're going to run to a break at the bottom of the hour, but so I'd like to come back out of it and talk to you about this. So we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We're not talking about eliminating the ego. You're just simply talking about illuminating some of its tricks. Right? Yes. Some of the tactics that it uses to play us like a sock puppet. Right? So you're not saying, oh, let's just go ahead and throw ego out. I don't even think we could no. if we wanted to. You know, with the exception no. of all the enlightened masters that are basically, uh, basically telling everyone how brilliant they are because they're enlightened. Right? Right? Forget about that for a moment. But right? You're not talking about eliminating the ego. You're talking about illuminating some of its shenanigans. Is that a fair assessment? Thanks. That is a, that's a totally correct. Yeah, we, don't, we can't eliminate the ego, and I don't think I would want to. Um, I would want to learn how to simply control it and identify when it's talking versus when I talk. And Susan says in the thread before we run to a quick break, and I apologize, Susan, for some reason my phone isn't letting me load the entire quote, but she says, we have been taught to not believe we have our own wisdom. And I'm, I'm, I'm Ooh, assuming she says with this, Henry, that so that institutions in society can go, oh, well, since you don't have your wisdom, oh, let us show you the way. I think that's what Susan is trying to say. So I'll have you think about that for a moment. We're going to run to the bottom of the hour. We'll be right back. And then, Henry, I think what we should talk about is transitional radio and how your programming over there is helping us not eliminate. No one's saying, oh, you know, throw the ego out. We're saying how to illuminate some of its tactics. So we're going to run to the bottom of the hour, and then we'll be right back. All right. You're listening to the number one rated. Oh, we are. Look at that. All right, now we'll try it this way. You're listening to the number one rated (laughs) all-natural being with Brian Brody here on IPMNation.com. Whatever you are facing, he's always up for riding shotgun.
wrap of the day from the bottom of the hour. You're listening to the number one rated all natural being here on IPMNation.com. Thank you so very much for stopping over and hanging out with us. All right, we're back. And you can listen to this too. Henry, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about you? Well, two things. I I have to, if you don't mind taking just a moment, I have to thank, (laughs) and I thought of him right away, because the last thing he said to me this morning, last thing this person said to me is, make sure you don't miss up the cables. Right? And I said, oh, don't worry, Wayne. Don't. I took that cable and I tossed it and da 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 You know. <laughs> so I want, to, I want to send a shout out to Wayne and Henry to, to thank you for introducing me uh, to your brother. Because Wayne Noel, the, the, the best parts of everything that comes up through this broadcast, all the technical stuff. If you're like, oh, Brian, that was pretty crafty. How did you manage that? Wayne gets all the credit. I get none of it because, right, I'm looking at it now going, it would just kill them to get off my internet, wouldn't it? I'm beginning to think, Henry, maybe a holiday Sunday wasn't the time to do this. So let me remind folks, my apologies again. Nothing we're doing here, but you can head on over to ipmnation.com slash ANB now. I'd put Facebook or YouTube if you're coming to us via YouTube. Uh, I'd put it on in the background (laughs) <laughs> the video, and then uh, you can listen to the audio at ipmnation.com slash ANB now. And uh, so I thought of when we went to commercial, Henry, the moment I did that and you could hear it go out in the studio, I was like, I know Wayne's watching. And it, the last thing he said to me this morning was, don't mess up those cables. And what did I do? <laughs> I, messed, I messed up the cables. <laughs> All right. So, Henry, let's talk about transitional radio and let's talk about how you're helping people in terms of illuminating, not eliminating their ego, or the influence their ego has, I guess I should say. Well, you know, the whole intention, I mean, I, you know, I, it has been a lifelong process and uh, in trying to understand the role that ego plays. And, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, most of that is just admitting the fact that that ego does that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the whole intention behind transitional radio was to sort of develop some sort of a roadmap or some sort of a how-to, uh, one, initially, to get people to admit that they have an ego. Just get them to, to admit it um, and then realize you can play the games and you can do the analyses. Okay. Because if I did, had done this without my ego, what would I have chosen to do? That's the first step in trying to discern whether or not we actually have an ego and how it influences us. So for me... Um, the intention behind it was to get people to to open up and realize they have an ego, mm-hmm. and then from there, how to go through and, and start stripping away all of these um, these these cloaks, these these capes of of stuff that we carry around with us, and mm-hmm. start to figure out how to cut a hole in that gunny sack of ours so we can start letting some of this stuff go <laughs> away and it's not no longer carry it. Um, and realize, you know, you don't weigh 500 pounds. It's, it's you know, you, you weigh 150 and you're carrying all the rest. Right. But to me, that's what's the intention behind it. So those that are interested in it will will find it, tune it in, and, and start to grab onto some stuff. If they're not into buying it, then that's fine. They don't. No one has said they had to. But if you're really interested in doing this, this was the one way I felt without grabbing a two-by-four to get somebody's attention. Sure. Then try to talk at them. Uh, this was my way of getting them to talk to themselves, start questioning everything that they deal with their life. I'm just simply here to make people think, and you don't have to believe what I say. Sure. Uh, you know, you don't have to even even have to deal with that. It's just I just want people out there questioning what's going on around them. Pay attention to what's going on, but try to figure it out. Why is all of this stuff going on, and sure. why – does all of the stuff that is going on affect us in one way or another? And so that's been the whole objective behind uh, Transitional Radio. And that's why I love thinking reimagined as a tagline, because I have to tell you, when I read that and I saw the, let me put the logo up if people aren't familiar with it already, uh, and over on the YouTube page as well. Um, but the, you know, I, I th- the, the next thing that came to mind was the greatest thoughts in the history of thinking, now, you might go, Bri, the greatest thoughts, That's a, thank you for the plug, that's a bit much. But let's think about this for just a second, Henry. The greatest thoughts in the history of thinking belong to the individual when they figure out how to jettison the ego and how to live the rest of their lives with enlightened wisdom, 
which is what they already possess before, yeah. like you said, the cloaks, the, the you know, before they uh, cut the hole in the bottom of the gunny sack, being a philosophical Sherpa. Uh, Aldous Huxley, I think it was. Was it Aldous Huxley said the doors of perception, uh, if the doors of perceptions were cleansed, you would see everything. Everything would appear as it is infinite. Same thing. Yeah. If you, you would recognize that your potential is just this side of infinity. If you would get, okay. a, a, get rid of some of the philosophical varnish, the shellac, the paint, you know, those kind of things. What say you? Yes. Yes. You know, you can't, you can't learn to be your all-natural being. You have to unlearn right. to become your all-natural being. And, and again, this is a strange way to think. You know, where do I go to find this enlightenment? Where do I have to go? What books do I have to read? Or, you know, mm -hmm. what mountain do I have to climb and spend the next 90 years in the cave? It has nothing to do with that. Sure. It's all there. <laughs> we, have to just un, we have to unlearn everything so that we can get back to what we originally knew and have long since whitewashed it and paint coat after paint coat after paint coat trying to bury it. And mm -hmm. that's all we're trying to do is just get people to realize you already have it. You have all the wisdom you could possibly have. You just don't realize you do. And you will argue with it all the way down the line. No one wants to believe that they already have it. It's just so simple. I mean, it's so simple, but yet so complicated. And, you know, Henry, when you said that, you, you, you know, you don't have to go off and sit in a cave to find it, I, 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 I can remember... Um, you know, because I did go off to sit in a cave to find it in the mountains of Wudong Mountain in China. And mm -hmm. I can tell you that the insight that came to me in that cave, <laughs> thousands and thousands of miles away uh, in, in Wudong Mountain in China, was the same insight that I had in Chicago, Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock, sitting on the elevated tracks with a billion other people waiting to get on the train to get home. So in that moment, I realized that, yeah, we'll prepare our own lives to wait to get to this cave, to get to the top of the mountain, to get by the seashore. Well, it was the same realization that I had there <laughs> that I did in Wudong and, and the, you know, the purple line, the elevated, the purple line uh, in Chicago. It, it's, all, it's already there. You're already enlightened. And and guys like Deepak Chopra that talk about, oh, I'm enlightened 24 hours a day. So, like it's a bobble, like it's a widget, right. like it's a, you know, it's a it's a it's a trophy, it's an accolade. No, it isn't. No, dork. You know, it'd be like it'd be like me saying, "Come to me for enlightenment." I mean, right. come on, give me a break. Right. You know, that's 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 ego. Right. There's right. your ego talking. Right. It's not. You already have it. Yes. Or if you we'll, set up we'll a little roadside stand in Ecuador and said, "Oh, come to me and I'll give you your spleen." Right? Come to me, and I'll give you your large intestine. What? I already have a large intestine. Yes, that's what we're trying to say. So that's one of the reasons that I vote for you to be my philosophical filter, right? Just like my air filter, my water filter, right? What foods I eat and everything else. Non, uh, what is it, GMOs, genetically modified organisms? Well, yes. well I just look at GMOs as uh, genetically modified opinions, Yes. Well, I don't want any genetically modified opinions. I want my all-natural being. I want my wild at the core. And I want transitional radio to remind me to be that philosophical thought filter, just like you're filtering water before you drink it or you're filtering out a braided tire dust in an air filter. I want it to be that same thing. And I think that's why people are so fired up and excited about what's going on over a transitional radio. That's just my take. Well, I thank you for that, Brian. I really do. It's 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 like I said. It's it's going against the grain. It's it's going against the way everybody's been taught. It's mm -hmm. going against everything that we deal with in our lives, and taking it and turning it inside out, and you know, breaking up a puzzle and putting it back together again in a mm -hmm. different form or fashion. Because we have to. Sure. The one that we've been done, that one that we've grown up with, it doesn't work. I mean, you just have to look out, well, look at it, each of you, everyone's individual lives. It doesn't work. <laughs> we all have issues. We shouldn't have those issues. We didn't have them when we were created, but we got them now. So we need to just draw a line in the sand and say, okay, from here on out, I'm going backwards. I'm going to start stripping this. I'm going to see what makes me unhappy, and I'm not going to deal with that. 
I'm going to see what makes me uncomfortable, and I'm not going to deal with that anymore. I'm going to see what makes me non-complete, and I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Hmm. And just gradually work our way back, shroud after shroud, chain link sure. after chain, uh, you know, to get back to our as close to our all-natural being as we possibly can mm-hmm. um, before the fear sets in. And then we have to readdress the fear and then restart the whole process again sure. of continuing to go through that. So, yeah, it, it's... Again, realizing that we are, uh, we realizing that we we are in control. We can actually make the changes. Step one, then begin to st- make the changes. That's step two, and we don't have to seek things outside of us. It's all there. We just need to learn how to trust that again, mm-hmm. because we have been beaten up. We've been beaten down. Uh, the, our ego has allowed us to stick our face out and get it bloodied mm-hmm. many, many times because we. You know, it it just wants to see us. It's such a it's such a fun thing. I mean, I look at ego as 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 sitting there on a rock, waiting for us to do our next stupid thing, and uh, just uh, we they bought a ticket for a show, and, sure. and we are very and we're that very, show. very very game to play it. It's kind of uh, what it, Susan was saying over in the thread hinder that you know we've been taught to not to believe we have our own wisdom, so that the institutions in society that you could take that at a more micro level and say that we've been taught not to believe in our own wisdom. So that the ego can go, oh, wisdom, I've cornered the market on wisdom. I know what we're talking about. All right, we're taking calls, 833-462-3968, toll-free, 833-GO-BU. We're into about the final 15 minutes with Henry Noel wow. from Transitional Re- I know, right? If I, but you got to get back. Like, you're a judge today. You've got all kinds of really cool. My <laughs> mouth is just watering thinking about, you know, jalapeno poppers and some of the things you're doing. But aren't you a judge of a... You've got all kinds of cool things coming up today. What are you doing? Yeah, reader, reader, reader and I are judges for the um, hors d'oeuvres, I believe, or oh. appetizers, I believe, that's coming in. <laughs> uh, there's a steak cook-off today, 250 steaks being cooked, oh. um, and the 10 different um, uh, groups, the 10 different teams cooking these steaks that are going to be judged also. Uh, thank goodness I'm not one of those judges because that would be just impossible. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a, a huge thing here, and it's so much fun. I mean, I never have experienced this before, and I'm having a ball with it. Well, I can imagine being the judge of an hors d'oeuvre competition. What a way to go. I know. Isn't right? that tough? Yeah. Well, somebody's got to do tough. it. <laughs> a tough day. 833-462-3968, 833-GO-BU in our final minutes with Henry Noel. So, Henry, what do you've got? I know you're going to be, uh, you're going to be involved in the, in the barbecue this weekend. And then what are you doing over at Transitional Radio? When can uh, we look for the next post? When's the next bit of audio going to go up? Uh, and when's the next series? I know you did a three-part series, uh, Faith and Dreams. Uh-huh. What's the next thing you're working on? Oh, and congratulations. I saw your byline in a magazine in Ecuador. Oh, you're writing an article. So congratulations, uh, uh, congratulations on that as well. You're a man of many talents. So well, we're having fun. Let's put Good. it that way. But thank you very much. I you're appreciate welcome. that. You're welcome. Um, next one, I'm working on freedom. Okay. Um, it is going to be a multi-part series on okay. freedom, on whether or not, you know, what is freedom? Uh, do we believe we in freedom? Do sure. we have it? Um, you know, and so it's going to be a, a really, a, a, it's going to be a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. All right. Um, but that's the next thing I'm working on. I, uh, I have to finish up with the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the picnic, the, the community picnic today. Mm-hmm. And then we, uh, we'll sit down tomorrow and probably take a break and then just kind of talk and uh, spend some good quality time. And then we are on the road Tuesday again, next journey. Good. And, uh, we'll report, we'll be reporting in from someplace else in the United States <laughs> and, um, um, uh, and then, and then from there, then I'm going to start really focusing on transitional radio. Very cool. Uh, start getting more of the posts up, uh, and also going to be starting to work on some of the video. See if I can't start getting some of the video done. So Very cool. We're going to play around and see. And if not, then it'll be back when I get back to Ecuador. Very cool. And then, you know, just because apparently I want to torture myself, could you snap a picture of the winning hors d'oeuvre? And could you snap a picture of the winning steak dish and maybe throw it up in the thread a little bit later? Oh, I yeah. would just love to <laughs> aggravate you with that. Yes. That would be just... <laughs> Very cool. Well, listen, speak now to see now, see how you are. This is less than aggravating for you. Um, it's what I'm calling my true fru thank you. Now, when people go, well, why true fru thank you? Well, for me, right, the all natural being, this is real fruit, freeze dried, fresh. And then immersed 
in dog, dark chocolate. So I'm calling it the True Fru. Thank you. So, Henry, as a thank you for calling in, the cherry was great. I ate the whole bag, so forget about that. So here's what we can do. I, I could show the raspberry. I could show the, uh, the, dark cho- uh, the bananas and dark chocolate. But what I think I would do is just say, Henry, go to True Fru when you get a chance, truefru.com, T-R-U-F-R-U. Dot com. Tell me what your favorite flavor is, and whenever you're going to end up next week, then uh, a part of the True Fruit thank you, I'll get you and read a bag of, uh, you know, it's clean ingredients, all natural, full of antioxidants, gluten-free. So well, I like to think of it as gratitude that tastes good, right? So, oh, yeah. so I want to get you a bag of that, so just let me know what your favorite flavor is, and uh, we can go from there. Final thoughts before we let you go back to the judging. Uh, you know, Please, every everyone. I mean, I, you know, I appreciate everybody that's that's there and and, uh, and and listens in on all of this. And I know it can get mundane sometimes, but uh, we are we are who we believe we are. Mm-hmm. And if we continue down the road of believing that what we've learned, that's not who we are. We we have been learned. We've learned how to be this way. We've learned how mm-hmm. to make these decisions. We've. You, I mean. The proof in the pudding is, is how many times have we said, my God, I'm growing up just like my father. I'm growing up just like my mother. <laughs> There's the proof right there for you. You know, sure. like, geez, oh, Pete, why am I doing this? Well, because you've been taught to do this. Been taught to do it. It that doesn't make it bad. It just seems to, it just makes you not you. Sure. And that's where we're trying to go. So please, you know, follow you. I mean, you're doing a fabulous job. And, uh, and dig into transitional radio. Send me messages. If you sure. really want to try to know where I'm coming from, but besides I could use a good reminder on occasion, send me a note. Um, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Don't, don't ever hesitate. And I can tell you, the people listening, that uh, I take advantage of it all the time. I'm either texting them or, or uh, not tweeting, but instant message, Henry, especially when it comes to having that philosophical filter, right? Those things, yeah. right? Because sometimes we just all want some uplifting Right. Sometimes yeah. it's okay just to, to to as I said, thinking reimagined. It's okay to question your own thoughts and go: Is there another way for me to put my heart's highest priority top of my list? Is there another way exactly. for me to channel my wild at the core? Uh, my friend uh, Tim Creasy uh, from Yeti sent me my uh, coffee cup. It's built for the wild. Is that logo? And I love that. I say all the time. Boy, I wish I would have thought of that tagline. As soon as they let that website go, I'm stealing that. But built for the <laughs> wild. Everyone is built for the wild. But we want to wrap ourselves, as you say, Henry, wrap ourselves in the commonplace. That's not helping a lot. And then we reach a certain age. And before I let you go, maybe we could talk about this for a minute or two. Sure. There is the real danger of some of us getting too old that we'll never be able to channel our all-natural being. We'll never be able to tap our wild at the core. There will come a tipping point. There will come a day where we're just going to be too old to do anything about it. So talk to us a little bit about how important it is to magnify this particular moment in all of time. And I'm not talking you turn 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. I'm talking about those final moments of life when you look back and go, this is how I spent my genius I'm going to go to the ground having treated my gray matter this way all of my life. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, to me, the objective in leaving here, leaving this body and, and letting our energies continue on its merry way and, and join, rejoin with, with spirit or God, mm-hmm. however you want to talk about it, is to do it without regret. Mm-hmm. And it's the regrets. This is the guilt. That keeps us locked in this body that, mm-hmm. that, that we just can't seem to understand why it's so devastating. And so when we are there, when we are facing our end as far as this physical body is concerned and getting ready to then progress on to the, our new life, you don't want to do it with regrets because that locks you and holds you into this realm. You know, one of the mm-hmm. things that, that I really wish that everybody would do, and it, it, literally it's a plea from me. Mm-hmm. You know, question that which you have accepted without question. You know, that which you believe to be true, because if you don't start questioning, you don't get to take that first step in uncovering the real truth. Mm-hmm. So here we lie in our deathbed, angry, 
for having not completed our bucket list. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, disgusted because we are so full of guilt that we had yelled at our grandkid or we, you know, hit our child when we shouldn't have done that. And mm-hmm. and and you, we're going to go through this, and this gets carried on, and we get to do this all over again. Mm. I don't tend to do that. Right. I, you know, this is my shot at it, and, and right. I would love to just continue with the understanding that I have some knowledge, I'm going to use it. I would rather be wise and use the knowledge I have mm-hmm. than not gain any more knowledge and look foolish. I think that I, I, I would absolutely agree with you. I would absolutely agree with you. And then, final question. Let's say other people are listening to you say that, and they go, yeah, I absolutely agree with that point. What's the first step? What can we do? I mean, it's easy to sit here and say those. They become like platitudes, right? It's, this is what I believe. But then where the rubber meets the road, we've got to be able to do something that can actually, that can reinstate your all-natural being, right? That can reinstate your heart's highest priority, top of your list. What, what's, what's the first thing that we can do if, we, if we're drinking the Kool-Aid and we buy into that? What do we got to do? We have to question. Okay. Question everything. Why is it that I feel guilt? Why is it that I fear? Why is it that I need this stuff? Why is it I want that? Why is it? The more you ask yourself why, you give yourself that slight little hesitation to not do it. Okay. And the more we question why, the more we start to uncover, the more we start to strip away. Because we've just learned to not ask why. I mean, why, did, why is it this way, Dad? Because I said it is. Oh, yeah. It's not the answer, you know? Yeah, I'm with you. We, so we have to start to learn. And it's not going to come from anybody else. It has to come from us. So question it, question it. Every time a thought comes into your head, question why it's there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like this these people because that's a different religion. Why? Why? Why is it? Right. Why is it that I believe that? So and you'd say some question down. marks. You'd say question marks more than exclamation points. Absolutely. You. We cannot go back. Well, let's put it this way: we cannot progress to what we were in the past. Mm-hmm. If we don't ask why, why did we, how did we get here? Why right. am I here? Right. Why did I do this? Why did I believe that? Why did right. I actually take that job? Why did, why do I do this? Because, and I hate it. Why do we do this? It's because we've been taught to do it. Sure. And until we can unteach ourselves, don't ever stop asking why. And, and if you don't do it to the person in the mirror, you will never uncover who the, your true natural being. You'll never find it. All right, Henry, I think that's what we'll probably leave as the last of the thought. We'll let you get back to being, <laughs> what a great gig. Let you be back to, you and Rita, to being the judge at the hors d'oeuvre competition. And it just, there just have to be, I, my mouth is watering thinking about that. Right? I, I love the guys at tryh 2 you know, dot com, and I'll be drinking my wheat juice grass powder or wheat powder grass juice, whatever it is. I love the taste. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you're going to be eating hors d'oeuvres and steak, and and uh, I'm going to be drinking my blended meals to get me through that. Well, door. I will <laughs> certainly take pictures of your hors d'oeuvres oh, and yeah, these yeah. Uh, choice I, yeah. ribeye steaks, <laughs> and I will get them up on the thing just for you. <laughs> I know. It, you're so kind. It, it, it's like a brother from another mother. It, it's just, the kindness you extend me. It's just unbelievable. All right, Henry, thank you so much. Hey, we're going to hang out tomorrow morning. The next time I talk to you, Wow, we got some. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna help me kind of bookend. The next time I talk to you, will be tomorrow morning at seven a.m. So have an yep. absolutely great day, a great evening. Tell everyone there I said howdy, and now we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. You got it, my friend. You and don't forget truefruit.com. I owe you a bag of something really good. So truefruit.com. Let me know what the flavor is, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Brian. Sounds good. It. All Take right. Care. Thanks so much, Henry. Good Bye luck. Now. Thank you. Kick the doors in, man. Keep kicking the doors in. That's my goal. Thank you so much, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Bye now. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Don't forget, Henry Noel, Transitional Radio. You'll be very glad you did. Let me say hello to Ian. Ian, thank you so much for joining us here at All Natural Being. We're going to run to a quick break at the top of the hour. I think when I told Ashley to get the 
get all the neighbors and get them out of here and go over the swimming pool. Uh, since she left, the internet hasn't gone down. So maybe there's something to that. Maybe they're all busy heading over to wherever they're going to go and get off my internet. All right. We will be back in just a few moments. Hey there, this is Lee Rowley from Sales Copy Academy, and you're listening to the live 24-hour all-natural being marathon with my good friend, Brian Brody. Keep your mitts off that browser tab because Brian will be right back after this short break with another solid hour of all-natural shenanigans on all-natural being. Stay tuned. IPMNation.com 